So we've got Abe from Sydney. Good evening, Abe. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, my question is about Mirabella Resources. It's been on a downtrend lately. It's in the nickel uh, mining, and I just in Brazil. And I wonder what the, the panel think about it. And also specifically to Roger, uh, he mentioned something about the Chinese government putting the brakes uh, due to the to, due to the bursting of the possible bubble in the real estate. But isn't don't they have to have the uh, balance but balance that against possible riots due to increase unemployment? employment, uh, where I heard that uh, the Chinese government has to maintain an, uh, an employment, uh, a rate of growth of about 8% to keep the mob happy from riots, from rioting against... Uh, <laughs> I think I, I think I got the gist of that question. At the moment, basically, prices has been heading down. The, the volume's been pretty heavy. So if you're, you know, if the sellers are getting out here with gusto, that's, that's telling you what's going on. And Gary, this is a nickel play uh, in WA. Is that yeah, yeah, I know a little bit of business there, but um, you know, I, I sort of, the, I, definitely on the charts. It's I, I, still. I agree with Roger a little bit here. Actually, I think you've got to be careful in some of these resource plays at the moment. So I think there's a bit of risk um, withholding some of these um, resource caps. I, I, I'd be sort of looking for a bit more yield, a bit more safety currently. Okay. Look, in answer to that economic question, I don't know. You know, I, I really don't. And 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 Abe, you, you need to understand, I'm I'm not an economist. Um, uh, I, I'm just sharing a view. Uh, and it's very important that you understand uh, that, quite simply, a lot of the GDP growth that China has been getting is input growth. 67% of GDP is infrastructure spending um, or fixed asset spending. Uh, so it's not like uh, the United States or Australia where the growth is related to outputs. It's, it's more like uh, the growth that was seen after World War II in Japan and in Germany. It's input related growth. Now, that's simply not sustainable. I mean, how many empty buildings do you keep building? How many bridges do you keep building that no one drives across um, before you realise the returns are, uh, are not there to justify spending on even more of those things? Um, so I think in the short term, uh, it, it will pay to be cautious. Ted from the Gold Coast. Good evening, Ted. Uh, Sunshine Coast. Sunshine Coast, sorry. Close. <laughs> uh, Other okay. side of Brisbane. Uh, well, Daniel, I'd like your panel's opinion on uh, Henderson Group, HGG. They recently posted a 79% underlying profit uh, increase and an increase in dividends, but the share price seems to be tracking down with the market. If I was going to pick a uh, business in this space, um, I, wouldn't look, I wouldn't look past uh, Platinum Asset Management. 70% return on equity, trading at a discount to intrinsic value now, uh, assuming the stock market is benign, the environment's benign, um, and we don't get any substantial declines in, uh, in uh, uh, the market, uh, then I'd much rather own a, a Kerr Nielsen's business or a piece of Kerr Nielsen's business um, than Henderson, and I think that's all you need to know. Is there, is there any risk to, I mean, it's had such a fabulous run, it's got very trustworthy uh, funds which seem to do well, they're not necessarily long only, he's able to put hedges on, on various things, so, well, I mean, in some ways they've got a hedge fund, but they don't call it, uh, yeah, no, themselves hedge funds, it is, it is it's for all the stuff. It is a hedge fund. It'll just go, go for, I mean, is this the next BlackRock from, from, the, from the South? Or is Look, I, I don't know, the issue that you have obviously is that Kerr Nielsen is the genius behind the business, he's got... He obviously has some smart people. I went to university with one of them. Um, uh, but obviously, you know, people make a lot of money in that business and they want to change and they retire and they move on. And so you're dealing with, with the change in personnel and that's, a, you know, that, that's something that's difficult. But having said that, where else can you get 70% return on equity? I mean, where else can you generate returns? Irrespective of the returns you generate for your clients, um, you're going to get 70%, 50, 60, 70% returns on equity because quite simply, other than some desks, uh, a contingent liability, which is the lease on the on the office. Um, you've got some printers. Uh, you've got some data subscriptions, um, and so, you know, some Bloomberg screens, if you like, and and that's pretty much it. You know, and the the rest of the business, you know, most of the cash um, is paid out in dividends. Not much of it needs to be retained. Um, that's a great business to own. There's no doubt about that. Platinum is a terrific business. It's a good. I guess the risk that come in is when you get key staff leaving. Um, in this, which is in precisely, this, yeah, which is yeah, precisely so the point I was, I was making. You know, yeah. it's, it, it, all of your assets are going up and down in the lift every day, um, and uh, that can be a great thing if they if you've engendered loyalty um, and uh, it can be a terrible thing if you haven't um, you know platinum has uh, is working that uh, that relationship very very well um, and they have quite quite stable uh, quite stable staff uh, but then you look at what can happen in, in another company uh, like Macquarie 
uh, where all the press is about people leaving and being watched over their shoulders and that sort of thing. So, um, yes, yeah. you've got to be careful with those people businesses. So, sorry, Ted, we didn't really hit on Henderson there, but I think uh, we'd probably push you in a, in a better quality fund manager here on the Australian market. Um, and that's the very important thing. You know, you can't own every stock on the market. So yeah, you can, I, can pick I just the cut across you there? I mean, why, why would you own the fourth best thing if you can buy the first best thing at a discount to its intrinsic value? You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Why, why buy the fourth best thing? You know, it just doesn't agree. make sense. I agree. Yeah. I think uh, that's one that was a big lesson from the last couple of years is that uh, you, you fight to quality always because mm. during the bad times, at least they hold up as well. So mm. that's what we've got at the moment. All right, thanks very much for your question there, Ted. And next online, we've got Anne from Melbourne. Uh, thank you for your program. Um, I wonder if you could tell me what you think of CSL. Uh, A1, A2 business. It has been um, for a long time. It, it is one of the, you know, the standout companies in Australia. You know, it really is a great business. There's no doubt about that. High rates of return on equity. Um, it's been rising. Its intrinsic value has risen. I mean, you, this will impress you. Its intrinsic value has risen from $2 back in 2006 um, to 31, about $31 now. Um, unlike Gary, if the share price drops uh, below $30, I'd be getting very excited about that. Um, and I, you know, anywhere between, you know, if you could get it between um, between $25, I guess, to, you know, $25 to $30. Um, the bigger the discount to that $31 intrinsic value, the better, in, in my view. Uh, I really think this is a business, um, a, a business that uh, is an outstanding business. Yeah, I'm forecast, I've got some forecasts for intrinsic values to rise, um, not by a huge amount uh, over the next uh, three years, but nevertheless, the intrinsic value is due to go to $35.40 next year and $37.25 the year after that. Um, the bigger the discount you can buy it at, to intrinsic value, uh, the the bigger the margin of safety, and and it's very important to try and buy good quality businesses at big discounts. At the moment, that big discount doesn't exist, um, but if you can get it at a big discount, and maybe Gary's right, and it drops through that thirty dollar level that he's talking about, and and you can buy it at a at a much cheaper price. If that's the case, that's the time to do it. There's a few things I worry about with CSL. Is well, for number one, is X growth. I mean, the blood plasma business that it's got is under threat from ACCC, they weren't, uh, weren't allowed to merge with the other business. They've got a big Spanish company on um, jumping on the bad wagon of what they're in and then a, a lack of product flow coming through. Sure. Uh, just, do yeah, do any of those things worry you a bit? No, I, I, look, it doesn't worry me. I mean, First Prize is a business that grows at a substantial rate, you know, a business whose intrinsic value is going to be three or four times in what it is today in four years' time and you can buy it at a big discount today. That's that's prize one, you know, that's the one you want, um, you really want. Um, but a business that grows at a slower rate or even a business that doesn't grow isn't that important to me. Earnings growth isn't as important as the return on equity that's being produced. Now, if it went, if it truly was going X growth and there was no reason to reinvest any money in the business, then they'd increase the payout ratio of the business and it'd be like a bond and then there'd be a new valuation and you'd be able to work out what that is. Um, so I'm less concerned about that. The other thing I'll say is, you know, everyone was talking about the growth of earnings at ABC Learning Centres. You know, but its return on equity was dropping every year uh, and that return on equity dropped and eventually the business went out of business because it was generating sub-economic returns. Um, so growth isn't as important as profitability and I'd rather own a business that was highly profitable and growing at a slower rate that a, than a business that was growing its earnings substantially but its return on equity was declining. Um, so keep those things in mind. Yeah. All right.